I'm glad they took time out of the last supply run to stock up on stale candy. The dead are walking the earth, and chewing on that rock-hard Twizzler is still the grossest thing I've ever seen on this show. Rick doesn't disappoint with one of his signature rambling shout speeches about nothing in particular, because people have to listen to you when you're holding a machine gun. I found Jesus. He told me about a world. It's a small world, after all. And when you're right, you're right. And if our rights are wrong, I don't want to be all right, all right, all right. Then he declares that people who take and kill have no place in this world, and if anyone tries that crap, he's going to take all this shit and kill them. Then Ezekiel has to start talking about this and thou and doth, like it's bad community theater, because people also have to listen to you when you've got a tiger. And then Maggie talks to, okay, three speeches, that's too many speeches. The more speeches delivered at an event, the less important it is. My high school graduation, they let any student get up there and say whatever they wanted. It took three and a half hours. It was the most pointless shit I've ever been to. Watching Daryl and Dwight using arrows to communicate with each other, the best. I don't know what the green lighting process is at AMC for spinoff series, but I need arrow chats with Daryl and Dwight yesterday. Is this really Rick's fantasy? To be an old man in bed listening to Weird Al? Damn, never realized we had so much in common. Carl continues to have the worst haircut on TV in the history of both haircuts and also TV. Just how bad is Carl's haircut? That absurd hat he wears is still not the dumbest shit on his head. And there's a lesson here for sure. Get a decent haircut or you're going to wind up working at a gas station. Hey, sounds like Carl has a new friend. I've been shot at. Someone threw a microwave at me. Uh, they, they threw microwaves at you? At a certain point, getting hit with a microwave is more on you than the person who throws it. Those things are not exactly difficult to dodge. Rick rhymes out of nowhere. Get that shit out of here, hungry dude. Rick heard what he had to say, Carl. Most of it. He skimmed it, okay? He got the gist, then he shot his gun. That's how Ricky G handles biz. Making a list is a helpful way to get things done. Whether that's running errands, going shopping, or picking off your enemies one by one. In this case, it looks like they're doing a little bit of each of those. Hey, everybody, it's Judith. Great to see you. They grow up so fast. She's really starting to look just like her dad, Shane. Something about the fact that this is the first episode of the season would lead me to believe this is, in fact, not the end of it. Unless All Out War means sitting around high-fiving for 15 episodes, which would still be better than all of season two. This operation does not look like it's built to succeed. BMX armor and sheet metal might protect you from a strong breeze, but that's about it. You guys, it's not Tara's fault she was off by seven seconds with this completely insane and made-up zombie freeway math. Usually, when she does zombie freeway math, she's chewing on red vines. But all they could scare up when they raided the movie theater on the last run was Twizzlers. The red vines give her all her zombie freeway math powers. It's amazing she was able to get that close at all. RV Face is my new favorite character. RV Face, a fan favorite from the comics, is bold and compelling and also dynamic. But most importantly, you never know what RV Face is going to do next. Looking forward to many years of adventures with RV Face and the highly anticipated spin-off web series, Steer the Walking Dead. How is it possible that Rick Grimes has aged 20 years and walks with a cane, and everyone else looks the same? I think Michonne looks younger. Negan adds insult to injury here, first telling Rick he was in a meeting, which is the lamest excuse in the Book of Lame Excuses, then yelling at Rick that they both know Negan has a bigger dick. But considering Rick is holding a gun, and Negan's holding a bat, and Negan is the one doing all the shit talking, I'm gonna have to side with Negan on this whole dick size issue. Hey, uh, Rick, do you maybe want to take a break from Roll Call to shoot Negan in his face? Because this seems like a prime opportunity. No, you just want to keep doing the name thing? All right, okay, you're the boss. Ugh. Gregory. The worst. This guy sucks so much. The fact that he thinks anyone at Hilltop still cares what he says would be cute if it wasn't so stupid. Let's see what Jesus has to say. All I have at the Hilltop are a bunch of books and an old lobster bit. Okay, that would be stupid if it wasn't so cute. All right, later, Gregory. Why don't you go talk to these stairs? Rick's name game worked so well. Let's try the counting game. Eight! Seven! All right, that is definitely not how the counting game works, but it finally got Rick shooting, so uh, no complaints here. Daryl takes a refreshing sip from his canteen, because it's important to hydrate before you lead a horde of zombies on your motorcycle while you blow shit up with a gun you stole. Daryl should give Rick some shooting lessons. You're supposed to use the bullets in your gun to shoot at targets and destroy them. Rick must have missed that day at gun school. R.I.P. RV Face. 2017 to 2017. The only thing Father Gabriel should have done with his car in this particular situation is hit the gas and point the business end at Gregory's dick. Okay, let's see if his goodwill pays off. It sure does for Gregory, who steals his car and drives away. There was almost no way to see that coming, except by thinking about it even a little for like half a second. Isn't that just the worst when you forget to wear your shitting pants on the one day you're supposed to wear your shitting pants? Also, it doesn't seem like Negan to leave the door unlocked, but I guess everyone makes mistakes. Like Father Gabriel, not realizing he's holding a gun and Negan is holding a bat. Gun beats bat 100% of the time. Tune in next week.
Will Carl's new friend appreciate the care package? He better. Carl even wrote him a note on a page of the Quran. Were any saviors injured by the 50,000 bullets Rick's gang unleashed? No, but plenty of windows were destroyed, and those windows have families. Will we see more of Rick's thrilling dream sequence? There's a big owl statue involved, so let's fucking hope not. None of this and more, next time on The Walking Dead.